The Mercedes EQV was the first full electric model in the super large MPV segment, claiming to be the people carrier of the future, with zero emissions and a 213 mile WLTP rated range. There are few practical compromises with the battery installation and quality levels are way higher than you'd expect from a van derived product. Inevitably you pay handsomely for that, but if you're able to, then for the time being anyway, in terms of drive range, size and quality, there's nothing to touch this Mercedes in its sector. In a world of electrified Ferraris, Porsches and Aston Martins, you might not think the idea of an electric Mercedes V-Class MPV too significant. We disagree. It's models like this that will help drive a grassroots change to electric driving, running families and business folk around and as they do, underlining just why full battery motion is now completely a sustainable option for modern transport. So let's welcome warmly this model, the Mercedes EQV. It's based on the V-Class, which in case you weren't aware, is the Stuttgart brand super large people carrier based almost entirely on its mid-sized Vito van. The development by the Mercedes van division of an E-Vito variant made the launch of this EQV in 2010 inevitable and this MPV, like its LCV counterpart, manages to make the switch to full electrification with very few practical compromises. This was the first of two all-electric van-based EQ model people carriers that Mercedes plans. The next will be the slightly smaller mid-sized EQT but many professional operators will need an MPV of this EQV model size, though they may not be quite as pleased to find that in this case you can seat only seven people. A combustion engine V-Class can take up to eight. This EQV is probably going to be quite a rare sight, given that prices start at around £70,000. That's about £20,000 more than the equivalent fossil fueled version of this design. But with a decent annual mileage, even that kind of premium could make sense for some business operators and forward-thinking families. Let's take a closer look. In many ways, this is the least EV-like EV I've tried to date. You have to start using a conventional key rather than a button and there are no sci-fi sound effects and you view this EQV's readiness to go via a pair of analog dials rather than a digital instrument screen. You'll still be pulling away in phantom-like silence though. Even pulling away isn't very EV-like. Instead of the usual battery-powered car's instant feel of torque to the tarmac, this Mercedes MPV gathers itself up with a little more decorum, though that's a byproduct of this model's near 2.7 ton curb weight as much as anything else. It's around half a ton heavier than a conventional diesel V-Class. Which, of course, is primarily down to the size of the huge 100 kilowatt hour battery that sits beneath the cabin floor, though only 90% of its lithium ion cells can actually be charged. Still, it's a large power pack, appropriately so given that a very large EV of this size needs a very large battery to propel it. We would have thought that to be fairly self-evident, but apparently not. Uh, Mercedes fits a battery of only 41 kilowatt hours in size to its mechanically near identical eVito van, and at the time of this test in spring 2021, this EQV's only direct challenges in the super large MPV segment, the Peugeot e-Traveller, the Citroen e-Space Tourer and the Vauxhall e-Vivaro Life all used a battery only 50 kilowatt hours in size and good for just 143 miles of range. In contrast, this EQV can go up to 213 miles between charges. Though not, of course, if you use all the performance available to you from the 204 HP asynchronous electric motor, which develops 362 Newton meters of torque, nearly as much as you get from the diesel unit in a conventional V220D variant. 
Engage the most dynamic of the available drive modes, that's sport, and 62 miles an hour from rest can be dispatched in 12.1 seconds, but you'll be able to watch your battery reserves draining almost visibly in the consumption part of the center dash screen's EQ menu if you drive like that. Uh, or try and approach this Mercedes modest 98 mile an hour top speed. So it's best to waft around in the alternative comfort drive setting, making full use of the way the EQV can replenish its battery using harvested regenerative braking energy. That's a process you can increase or reduce using these steering wheel paddles. The one on the left increases the level of recuperation while the paddle on the right reduces it. At the weakest level, the vehicle coasts, while at the strongest level, the regenerative braking effect is so strong you hardly ever need to use the brake pedal, except when coming to a complete stop. With a long pull of either paddle shifter, the intelligent mode D-Auto is activated. It uses a radar sensor and navigation data to automatically adjust the recuperation level to the traffic situation, so you don't have to. Now that's one way you can eke out extra driving range. Another is to keep the needle of the instrument binnacle's power meter dial in its blue charge or white economy sections as often as possible. Plus you'll need to frequently select the two most frugal drive mode settings, Eco or Eco Plus maximum range. Though doing that uh, reduces throttle response quite a lot, dramatically so in E Plus mode. You can also keep an eye on the way the powertrain is using or regenerating energy via a provided interactive energy flow screen, another option on that center screen EQ menu. Numerous detail engineering changes differentiate the EQV from the Evito Tura commercial model it's based on, alterations having been made to such things as the spring rates, support bearings, strut towers, dampers, anti-roll bars and bearings to create more car-like standards of ride and handling. Volume variants like the one that we're trying here get a supple comfort suspension package, but if you can stretch right to the very top of the range and sport premium plus trim, you'll be treated to airmatic air suspension, which treats potholes and speed humps with a great deal more disdain. That makes this setup quite a desirable feature to have, particularly as it offers a useful additional lift mode for added comfort at low speeds on really poor surfaces, raising the vehicle up by up to 27 millimeters when driving at up to uh, 16 miles an hour. Cruising in an EQV, of course, is largely conducted in impressive silence, though because of that, you tend to notice things like suspension noise and roar from the tires and mirrors rather more. All that aside, the drive experience here is much as it would be in a conventionally engined V-Class. Uh, inevitably, given the size of this MPV, it's 5.37 meters long and almost 2.25 meters in width, including the mirrors, and the elephantine weight we mentioned earlier, this Mercedes can feel a fairly ponderous thing. But there's also a quality and a heft to the way that everything works that helps to differentiate it from the commercial vehicle it's based upon. And there are other pleasant surprises too. The vast glass area ensures that this people carrier is relatively easy to see out of, unless it's completely full of people, while the boxy shape means that an EQV is easier to park than you might expect it to be. Uh, true, the rear seat headrests block your view rearwards, but in compensation, as standard, you get a rear view camera and an active parking assist system that helps you identify a parking space, then steers you into it. Even the 11.8 meter turning circle isn't too bad, and the 1.9 meter height is low enough to enable you to limbo under multi-story car park height restrictors. On the twisty stuff, you won't be expecting this Mercedes to handle sharply, and of course it doesn't. The electric steering is about as communicative as a Trappist monk when it comes to telling you what's going on beneath the wheels, and of course body roll through tighter turns is acute. Why though would anyone really want to throw a vehicle of this kind about? Assuming that you're going to be regularly carrying at least five to six people, chucking an EQV through a set of bends is going to be a recipe for car sickness that won't endear you to your passengers. 
It's much more in its element on the highway, of course, and in a boxy, high-sided vehicle like this, we particularly like the peace of mind offered by the standard side wind assist system, which compensates for sudden gusts that might otherwise force the vehicle from its intended path. It all means that this is quite simply a far more sophisticated super large EV people carrier than anything else currently on the market. And that's even before you take it account of the fact that it'll travel significantly further on a single charge than any of its direct rivals. As Mercedes will be very well aware though, a 213 mile potential driving range won't satisfy potential customers in this segment for very long. A vehicle this size ought to have a battery range far greater than that and future versions of this model will doubtless be able to travel substantially further than that. For the time being though, in its segment, the EQV is state of the art, the S-Class of large electric MPV people carriers. Plenty of well-heeled families and executive carriage companies will find that tempting. It has to be said that the V isn't a bad looking thing for a big box, which is perhaps why this isn't one of those EQ electric models that Mercedes has decided to completely restyle. Actually, the EQV features minimal changes over the V-Class model it's based upon. The key difference lies with this black panel radiator grille, which is a specific EQ design feature. It looks a bit anonymous with base sport trim, so it's worth stretching beyond to get the so-called EQ exterior design package we have here, which adds chrome fins to that upper grille, chrome framing around the lower bumper section and an AMG lower spoiler lip painted in high gloss black. There's an added black finish too for the headlamps of the Mercedes LED intelligent light system, which features 34 LEDs in each unit, providing beams that turn with the wheel and adapt themselves to the kind of road you're on. And in profile, well, the slab sides have had some swage lines and shape built into them, and there are standard roof rails. Only the biggest long wheelbase, extra long variant of this model is being sold in the UK, which is quite a hunk of Stuttgart real estate. 5.37 metres in total length and over 1.9 metres in height. Apart from this EQV front wing badge, differences over an equivalent V-Class are mainly about the two different wheel designs on offer for EQV customers. Usually five twin spoke design 17 inch rims like we have here, unless you stretch to the flagship Sport Premium Plus variant, which gets larger five spoke 18 inch alloys. If you've avoided base trim, you'll also get heat insulating privacy glass and a high gloss black finish for the mirrors. At the back, the only EQV identification lies in badge work and the lack of tailpipes. Avoid base trim and you get this chromed bumper cover strip too. Otherwise, it's just as it would be on an ordinary V-Class with brightly illuminating full LED tail lamps and a deeply cut rear window with a lower edge embellished by this chrome strip. Small reflectors feature on the outer edges of the bumper and on most variants uh, you also get this subtle roof spoiler too. You don't buy a big Mercedes V for its sexy styling though. You buy it for its space and solidity and for a very three-pointed star kind of feel once inside. The large door doesn't actually open very wide and slams with the kind of vibrating thunk you get in a van. Still, there's not much else that's particularly LCV-like once you get behind the wheel, unless you count the agreeably high and commanding driving position. There's not much that's particularly EV-like either. Uh, you even get an ignition key slot. Uh, this is just about the only electric vehicle we've tested that doesn't have a starter button. The UK importers haven't bothered with the rose gold trimming, a colour supposed to be reminiscent of copper wiring, that decorates the cabin of European EQVs. So unless you happen to register the EV power meter that replaces the usual rev counter in the instrument binnacle, or come across the extra EQ menu on the center dash monitor, 
you'll notice no real differentiation over a combustion V-Class model. In case you're not familiar with that, we'll brief you on the front of cabin experience here. The fascia is a smart two-section design with upper and lower parts separated by a three-dimensional trim element that tries to give the cabin a feel of width. Uh, depending on the spec level that you choose, it'll feature either of two finishes, uh, ebony wood dark anthracite for the base model, or otherwise, as here, wood with pinstripe effect. Either way, you're treated to an upmarket ambience thanks to heated Lugano black leather upholstered seats with armrests, also heated, uh, plus discreet ambient lighting that can illuminate in a choice of colours. In other words, it's as different in here from the E-Vito van as Mercedes could possibly make it. Adding to the feeling of luxury is a sense of space. There's a yawning gap between the seats so that you could easily head rearwards to separate squabbling children or confer with the VIPs should the back area seating configuration permit that. Because this EQV uses V-Class cabin design dating right back to 2014, it can't include the latest twin-bonded monitor widescreen cockpit system that features on the company's more recent models. Still in compensation, the brand provides this 10.25-inch central touchscreen with latest generation graphics, this offering navigation, radio, phone, media, info, apps and store settings you can also flick between using this intuitive touchpad that sits in this extended out part of the centre stack. The main screen also features the EV specific EQ menu that we mentioned earlier which gives you charging options, battery consumption info and an energy flow monitor so that you can see the electric powertrain working in real time. This media setup hosts the Stuttgart brand's MBUX Mercedes-Benz user experience multimedia platform. This is supposed to take in-car connectivity to a new level, both slightly undermined by the setup's failure to include something as basic as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring with entry-level EQV trim. The smartphone integration package that you need for that is only standard with more expensive variants like the one we have here. What you do get on every variant is standard Hey Mercedes voice activated functionality, the brand name designating the greeting that you'll need to address to the screen in order to get its incorporated MBUX speech recognition setup working. As we've remarked when testing some of the company's other more recent models, uh, this aspect of MBUX remains in our view something of a work in progress but in our estimation it's vastly better than most of the other voice recognition setups currently on the market. Conventional voice control systems require certain specific voice commands from their users but this setup's linguatronic natural speech recognition is pretty good at understanding almost anything that you ask of it. Uh, it's particularly good at things like finding new radio stations or telling you what the weather is at a programmed destination. Anything the infotainment display can't tell you will be covered off by the rather old-fashioned looking instrument binnacle setup which sees a small colour screen nestling between the two deeply cowled analogue dials that you view through this three-spoke leather stitch steering wheel. That wheel is multi-adjustable so it's easy to find a comfortable driving position. In fact, um, it's easy to get comfortable in almost every way. We particularly like the climate control system controlled by this central menu button which enables you to preset the cabin climate, a standard EQV feature along with electric auxiliary heating and to flip between temperature settings for the first row and the rear row sections of the vehicle. As you'd expect in an MPV, there's plenty of space to store stuff. There's a huge lidded central cubby under the centre stack, uh, boasting two cup holders and a stowage area along with twin USB ports, although they're of the USB-C variety, so you have to have this unsightly converter lead. The doors have huge lower bins and an additional upper stowage area for smaller items. From outward appearances, the glove box also seems as if it's going to be big too, but it turns out to be mostly taken up by the owner's manual. Uh, there's a pen clip and an upper ledge within it. Mercedes hasn't forgotten to provide an upper sunglasses compartment, 
In addition, there are ticket clips in the sun visors and you get a netted storage pocket in the front passenger footwell. Uh, that's somewhat restricted in size because of the large base the seat sits upon. What else? Uh, the driving position? Well, we mentioned that it's nicely raised. Uh, initial impressions suggest that it'll also be rather upright and that these front A-pillars might slightly impede your view at junctions. Settle in though and you'll find that there's little to worry about, apart from the fact that these seats don't provide much side support when cornering. The way you're seated in this MPV may not be especially car-like, but it gives you a fine view of the traffic ahead, while any concerns over front three-quarter visibility are alleviated by these small quarter-like windows ahead of the doors. Rearward visibility isn't quite so good as usual in a big MPV. The third seating row severely hinders your vision through the rear screen, so you'll be making frequent use of the standard all-round parking sensors and rear reversing camera. While we're griping, we'll also tell you that some of the plastics lower down the dash are of questionable quality for a £70,000 car, but the further up you look, the nicer it gets. Time to move into the second row where the standard electric sliding doors that you get on both sides of the vehicle glide back to reveal an enormous seating area, which impressively hasn't been at all compromised by the underfloor need to accommodate an enormous 90 kilowatt hour battery. There are only two individual middle seats here. Unlike a conventionally engined V-Class, there's no option of having a three-person middle bench. Provided you've avoided base sports spec though, you do get that ordinary model's table package, which includes this folding table from which you can extend flaps that provide a work surface for passengers on either side. Like the two individual seats, this table unit can slide backwards and forwards and it includes two rather small cup holders and a trinket tray. The nice thing about having a super large van based people carrier is that there's enough room for these chairs to be detached, turned round and repositioned to face the bench at the very rear. Perfect for on the move business conferences, the sort of thing that wouldn't be possible in a Galaxy or Sharan sized people carrier that was merely large. The seats provided are reasonably comfortable, though feature bases that are a bit flat in terms of support for really long trips. Obviously being able to slide them about on floor rails means that there's the potential to position them in a way that will offer a vast amount of legroom. Ideally, uh, the positioning in question will need to be done before you set off as it's not easy to change things once on the move. On each side there's a 12 volt socket, a storage compartment and above to the sides and overhead reading light and a roof mounted vent. The central part of the ceiling has a rear cabin climate control panel too. Now if all the rear seats are forward facing, getting to the very rearmost third row is a touch more awkward. You pull up this catch behind the second row seat and angle it forward. Still, at least once you're finally in, the EQV's boxy shape means the very back here is suitable for adults rather than just kids. You get a three-person bench, and with the middle row chairs normally positioned, it offers plenty of space for legs and knees, plus ample headroom. Third row folk at either corner get these uh, curious stand-up cup holders too, plus the electric doors feature small bins. Large families will also like the fact that on the two-person part of the bench there are Isofix child seat fastenings. There are buttons on each side to angle out the rear quarter light windows and if you've got a, a model that's included with the Burmester premium sound system then the speakers here will allow you to speak more clearly to the people up front with your voice being amplified either way. Let's finish with a look at luggage space. Before we go lifting this tailgate, it's worth mentioning that there's the convenience of this separately lifting rear glass section if all you want to do is throw in a few lighter items or perhaps you don't have the space to open up the full hatch. You certainly have to stand back when it does activate. Once it's up 
a canopy is created, which is quite helpful in bad weather if you're loading in luggage or trying to corral the kids around the car. Because, as mentioned previously, the EQV is based on the largest extra-long V-Class body shape, the luggage space that you get at this point isn't very much compromised by the positioning of the third seating row. With this rearmost bench normally positioned, there's a massive 1,410 litres of carriage space. A theoretical rival like Ford's Tornio Custom PHEV could offer a more... Uh, well, a fraction more space than this, but it's hard to imagine why you would need it. A 12-volt socket features back here. Uh, unfortunately, though, there's no underfloor compartment for the storage of the tonneau cover. If you need to convey bulky items and push them further into the cabin, then you might miss the flexibility that a Galaxy or Sharan class MPV would give you of being able to simply fold the seats into the floor. Here, you either fold the seat backs onto their bases, or you have to take the individual chairs out entirely, which isn't easy because they're awkward to remove from their rails and very heavy. Plus, of course, you've got to have somewhere to store them. Of course, if you're able to take the second and third row chairs out, you basically get yourself a removal van with all the second and third row seats out, and EQV offers up to 5,010 litres of space. It's just a question of whether buyers will be able to stomach the thought of throwing things like muddy bikes or sandy surfboards into such a lavishly equipped cabin. The various optional boot tubs will help here. From launch, EQV pricing started at around £70,000, which gets you the base sport trimmed model. You're probably going to want to stretch at least as far as this mid range sport premium model, which costs just under £2,500 more. At the top of the range, the sport premium plus variant requires a £77,000 budget. For our market, the EQV comes only with the largest extra long V class body shape and only with seven seats. Think in terms of a price premium of around £14,000 over a comparably specified conventional V220D diesel V-Class or just under £10,000 more than a V300D variant. Now, in terms of rivals, at the time of this test in spring 2021, our market hadn't yet been offered uh, what might potentially be the closest class competitor to this EQV, Volkswagen's all-electric ABT e-Caravelle. But all electric big MPVs based on the PSA Group's mid sized van platform, the uh, Peugeot e Traveller, the Citroën e Space Tourer, and the Vauxhall e Vivaro Life seem to offer strong competition and a big saving, all priced with comparable spec at around the £50,000 mark. Closer inspection, though, reveals that these models use a 50 kilowatt hour battery, almost half the size of that used in this Mercedes and therefore they offer a far lower EV driving range, just 143 miles. The Ford contender in this class, the Torneo Custom, can't be had in full EV form, only as a PHEV plug-in hybrid, costing around £61,000. But that's not quite the same thing. All of which means that if you like what this EQV has to offer, but you need to pay less, a better option would be to look at the LCV minibus version of this model that's available from Mercedes Vans, the eVito Tourer. This has exactly the same 90 kilowatt hour battery and 213 mile driving range as you get from an EQV and has the advantage of being available in the medium L2 body length as well as in the extra long L3 form. With base pro trim, an eVito Tourer could cost from around £62,000, or around £63,000 with a longer body length. An eVito Tourer with plusher select trim would be more comparable to what you get with an EQV, though still not quite as plush. An eVito Tourer select with the medium body length would cost around £65,000, uh, allow around £1,000 more for the longer body length. Not a massive saving then to get a van rather than, as in this case, an MPV very firmly marketed as a car. So you might quite reasonably take the view that there's nothing quite like an EQV. In which case, you're going to need to know just how generous Mercedes has been with the standard spec. 
Even the entry-level sport variant includes quite a lot. You get 17-inch, five twin-spoke alloy wheels, plus a sophisticated LED intelligent light system that turns with the roads and adapts to the kind of driving that you're doing. Also included are roof rails, power folding mirrors, auto headlamps and wipers and an easy pack automatic powered tailgate with a separate opening rear window. There's also electric sliding doors on both sides of the vehicle and a break-in and anti-theft system with interior monitoring and tailway protection. As for standard interior features, well, an effective climate control system is pretty important for a glassy, square-sided vehicle like this. And the EQV gets a good one, a thermatic three-zone set up to cool and warm both the front and the rear of the cabin. Mercedes also throws in electrical auxiliary heating, so a chauffeur could keep warm in the car park waiting for a client without the powertrain on. And pre-entry climate control, so you can set the climate system to preheat or pre-cool the cabin before you reach it. There's also Lugano black leather upholstery and a heating system for the front seats. Other standard features include classy branded illuminating door sills, ebony wood trimming inlays, uh, ambient lighting and powered electric vent rear quarter light windows and an auto dimming rear view mirror. Standard driving technology includes cruise control and a drive mode system with sport, comfort, eco and maximum range settings that allows you to tweak throttle response and feedback from the direct steer speed sensitive steering, all to suit the way you want your EQV to respond. Plus there's the Mercedes Comfort Spec suspension and a speed limiter. Now parking this huge vehicle has fortunately been simplified too, thanks to all round sensors, a reversing camera and an active parking assist setup that helps you identify a parking space, then steers you into it. What about infotainment? Well, there's an MBUX multimedia system, which comes with a 10.25 inch display, via which you can access a navigation plus GPS setup and Bluetooth link in your phone. Plus there's a DAB radio, uh, crystal clear front base speakers, two USB-C ports and an SD card slot. As for the EV stuff, will you get one year's rapid charging membership to the Ionity charging network and there's an 8 meter type 2 mode 3 charging cable for wall boxes and public charging stations. Though Mercedes makes you pay more for a cable compatible with a 3 pin domestic plug. On the subject of media technology, we should also mention that as standard, the brand also throws in all the benefits of its clever Mercedes Me app, which allows EQV drivers to plan their destinations from home or office, enter a departure time and bring the interior to the desired temperature before entering the vehicle. As with any other Mercedes, the app includes an emergency call feature that automatically alerts the emergency services with your exact GPS location in the event of an accident in which the airbags activate. Plus there's breakdown recovery at the push of a button, uh, tele-diagnostics which can automatically share maintenance issues with your dealer, uh, a maintenance management feature that reminds you when a service is due, uh, alerting your dealer, and a parking time assist feature that works if you've parked up to alert you when your meter is about to expire. For three years of ownership, you'll also get use of the brand's remote online services package. This allows you to lock or unlock your car from wherever you are from your phone and locate your vehicle's position if you've forgotten where you parked it. If you lend your EQV out to someone else, a geofencing feature can be set to alert you if it leaves a preset geographical boundary. And if your car is ever stolen, a vehicle tracker will show its location anywhere in the world. So then, the entry-level sport spec includes plenty within the base price. We think, though, that most buyers will still want to go a little further and find the extra £1,700 or so to trade up to the kind of plusher sport premium trim model that we have here which is marked out by rear privacy glass and the EQ exterior design pack that we briefed you on in our design and build section. To reiterate, this gets you chrome fins on the radiator grille, a high gloss black AMG lower spoiler lip and a chromed rear bumper sill cover. There's also black finishing for the headlights which gain a high beam assist plus auto dipping function. 
Uh, perhaps more important are the extra features that Sport Premium Spec gets you inside. Power adjustable seats with armrests, uh, memory functions and luxury headrests, a 360 degree parking camera and the smartphone integration package that adds Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring functionality to the center dash screen. Appallingly, that's not standard with base spec. There's also smarter double strip trim inlays and a table package for the rear that gets you a central sliding unit with deployable table flaps, plus 12 volt sockets, sidewall cup holders and pockets in the front seat backs. There's a big price jump to swallow if you want to progress further up the range to the top Sport Premium Plus model, most of which is swallowed up by the cost of adding Mercedes Airmatic air suspension uh, engineering into this MPV, complete with an additional lift mode for added comfort. Now, this top variant is also marked out by larger 18-inch five-spoke alloy wheels and a 15-speaker, 640-watt Burmester surround sound system. That Burmester audio setup can be optioned into the mid-range Sport Premium model. It has been here, and it's worth having because it incorporates a feature that allows the driver to communicate more easily with third-row occupants through the speakers. Now, on the subject of options, bear in mind that unless you want your car finished in either pebble grey or Jupiter red, the only two solid colours, you'll need to pay your dealer extra for metallic paint. Uh, we've got this rather hearse-like obsidian black metallic here. Most of the other options concern practical touches. You can get mounts for the front seat backs for tablet PCs, an iPad tablet safety case and Bluetooth headphones. We'd be looking at the various boot tubs that'll protect the cargo area from messy loads and mucky dogs. Plus, you could add in aluminium roof bars, a roof box and a bicycle rack that can take up to three cycles. For the inside, you can add a modular system that clips onto the back of the front head restraints and can be used for the attachment of coat hangers, bag hooks and so on. That's enough on extra cost features. Let's focus on the safety provision built into all versions of this Mercedes. It's only actually been a few years since all V-Class variants were fitted out with autonomous braking. Uh, Mercedes active brake assist package that warns the driver of an impending collision and will brake automatically if there's no response. Testing has indicated that this whole setup will eradicate 20% of nose to tail accidents and decrease their severity in a further 25% of cases. Other headline safety package inclusions, a side wind assist system that compensates for sudden gusts of wind that might well blow this high sided vehicle off course at motorway speeds. And you get an attention assist setup that monitors your reactions as you drive for signs of drowsiness. If that's detected, the system will alert you to stop for a restorative coffee. Now, you can also tick off uh, tyre pressure monitoring, Isofix child seat fastenings, neck pro anti whiplash head restraints, a heel start assist system to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and of course, twin front, side and curtain airbags. To hopefully ensure that airbags will never be needed, there's ESP stability control and an ABS braking system that features a brake drying function for optimum stopping distances in wet weather. There are also adaptive brake lights that flash in panic stops to warn following motorists. Because this EV is based on one of Mercedes' older designs, it can't offer the choiciest elements of the brand's latest camera-driven safety and semi-autonomous driving tech. But there's still plenty of kit included in the standard EQV driving assistance package, specifically four further key features. There's lane keeping assist, there to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway, and blind spot assist to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another driver. Cleverest of all, perhaps, is the motorway safety peace of mind that you'll get from the distance pilot Distronic setup. Much, much more than just cruise control. 
It'll keep your steering straight for a start and automatically maintain a safe distance to the traffic ahead, even seamlessly stopping and starting the car should you come across a tailback. Should you still have an accident in spite of all of this, the driving assistance package also includes a pre-safe anticipatory safety system that braces the car for a crash by tensioning the seat belts and closing the windows. The Federal Office of Statistics reckons that the driver of a Mercedes is 9.6% less likely to have an accident than the driver of a car from another brand. Looking at what's on offer here, you can begin to see why. In our driving experience section, we briefed you on this model's WLTP rated driving range figure, uh, 213 miles from its decently sized lithium ion battery, rated at 100 kilowatt hours, but with 90 kilowatt hours usable capacity. That range reading is way off Tesla territory, but at the time of this test in spring 2021, looked pretty good uh, compared to this model's closest Peugeot, Citroen and Vauxhall MPV segment rivals. All of these limited to just 143 miles. In this Mercedes, that figure should be slightly more attainable too, thanks to features like EQ optimized navigation, which bases its calculation on the fastest route, taking into account the shortest charging time. It also informs the driver of nearby charging points. Should you miss a planned charging stop, an active range monitoring system will activate in your EQV to try and ensure safe completion of your journey. This is assisted by a selectable E plus maximum range driving mode, which optimizes the vehicle's parameters to maximize the range. That rather overly restricts throttle travel and climate system output though, so for day-to-day -day charge frugality, you'll more usually use the less intrusive eco drive setting. What about charging? Assisted by the provision of a CCS2 combined charging system connector socket, allowing the EQV to be charged via DC, direct current, and AC, alternating current. The DC option offers speed, while AC is more cost effective for overnight charging. DC is available at most UK charge stations and will charge the vehicle faster, but requires more energy to do so. Using the 110 kilowatt DC onboard charger, an 80% rapid charge is possible in 40 minutes. As for AC charging, well, using the 11 kilowatt AC water-cooled onboard charger, a 0 to 100% charge is possible in 10 hours. EQV drivers get access to a Mercedes Me charge network, which can be accessed either via the Mercedes Me app or by using the MBUX screen in the vehicle. Mercedes Me Charge provides access to over 300,000 charging points across Europe without the need for multiple accounts and RFID cards. It incorporates multiple charging networks, including Polar, which is the UK's largest. A year's membership of the Ionity Rapid Charging Network comes included in the purchase price. At the time of this test, in spring 2021, there were around 400 Ionity quick charge stations along the main traffic arteries in Europe. The EQV also charges its batteries when on the move. When accelerating or braking, the powertrain's mechanical rotation is converted into recuperated electrical energy and used to charge the high voltage battery. The driver can also have a major influence on this recuperation process using provided paddles behind the steering wheel. The paddle on the left increases the level of recuperation while the paddle on the right reduces it. At the weakest level, the vehicle coasts, while at the strongest level, the regenerative braking effect is so strong that you hardly ever need to use the actual brake pedal except when coming to a complete stop. With a long pull of either paddle, uh, the intelligent mode D-Auto is activated. It uses a radar sensor and navigation data to automatically adjust the recuperation level to the traffic situation, so you don't have to. At the wheel, your main access point for monitoring range, charging and the functionality of the EV powertrain is the EQ menu on the center dash screen. This has four sections, the first covering your charging options. From here, you'll set a departure time, your maximum charge level, and the maximum charge current, 
plus you can search for local charging stations. The second EQ section covers energy consumption with graphical circles that give you an overall average figure, then break that down with smaller circles that cover the energy drain from driving, heating and cooling and other consumers. You can also select a graph showing electrical consumption and recuperation over four recent time periods, the last seven and a half minutes, uh, the last 30 minutes or the last 90 minutes or over the last three hours. The EQ menu also gives you an energy flow monitor so you can see in real time how the powertrain is working. And there's a vehicle section which shows the car's angle, the outside temperature and the percentage of acceleration or braking that you're currently using. You'll also want to keep a close eye on the power meter in the instrument binnacle, keeping the needle in the blue charge or the white economy sections and out of the red boost part of the gauge. What else? Well, as with rival EVs, all EQV models fall into base VED band A and will attract just 1% of benefiting kind company car taxation in the 2021-2022 tax year and 2% in each of the following two years. Insurance is going to be pretty pricey. Group 47E for the Sport and Sport Premium variants and Group 4080 for the top Sport Premium Plus derivative. Residual values ought to stand up well as this car pioneered a new market niche for full-sized people carrier EVs. That and the Mercedes badge should future-proof it to a reasonable degree. An EQV driver will enjoy lower maintenance costs than would be needed for a combustion model. Obviously uh, no oil changes are required and regenerative braking means that the brake pads are designed to last the life of the car. Will the EQV catch on? You might wonder, given the prices being asked here and the practical charging limitations. Mind you, 500 miles in a day could be achievable with careful lunch break charging from taxi driver and limousine operators. And of course, the further you go, the bigger the chance you'll be able to recover the initial upfront asking price investment, particularly if you regularly drive in the London congestion charge or ultra low emission zones. If you would have guessed, Mercedes would base its second all-electric model on the humble V-Class, but this is a comprehensively engineered and very forward-thinking product. In a decade or so, a combustion engine people carrier of this size will be very rare indeed. And when that happens, we'll look back at the EQV as being the originator of a very significant trend.